My friend, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week. And the doors were of the house were where and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Lord, and that equals for us mercy. When we find it hard to accept that God permits in our lives, usually it's because we have forgotten that Jesus is both Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? When it is hard and we struggle to obey the church's teachings or to follow the will of God, it's usually for the same reason. There is the story of a huge atomic energy plant that was malfunctioning. None of the plant's engineers and scientists could figure out what was the cause. Finally, an eminent professor 
in the field was summoned from his university post for consultation. The professor surveyed the situation, and then he asked for a hammer. He took the hammer in hand, walked over to a pipe, and struck it a heavy blow. Immediately, the plant began functioning again. Everything was back in working order. Later, the professor submitted an itemized bill for his services. It totaled $5,005. It read, for striking the blow, $5. For knowing where to strike the blow, $5,000. I think I should submit that bill sometimes. The engineer wanted to save the plant from destruction. Yet they didn't have the knowledge or the power to do so. The professor had both the knowledge and power, yet he needed the engineers to call him in. Jesus is both the engineer and the professor of our lives. Amen? Amen. Jesus wants to, our lives to flourish and grow with lasting happiness, wisdom, peace, and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus knows how to make that happen. So whatever God asks of us, or whatever God sends our way, no matter how difficult or overwhelming it seems, it flows from God's love that Jesus is our Savior. And then he gives us the power to be our Lord. Now, most of us are happy and content to have Jesus as our Savior. Amen? After all, every one of us, and I include myself, every one of us suffers to some degree in this life. And Jesus, through his own suffering on the cross, has given us hope that our sufferings can draw us more closely to God and that our sufferings can have meaning. They're not empty moments. And also, every one of us, and again, I include myself on this, we will someday have to face death. We are all going to have to face that day. But we need to remember that Jesus conquered death so that we know that if we die in friendship with Jesus, and if we let him be our savior, we will share everlasting life and eternal happiness with him. That is why most of us are very happy to have Jesus as our Savior. Yet there is a catch. Jesus is not just a Savior. Jesus is also a Lord. We cannot have Jesus just be our Savior unless we are also willing to 
to have him as our Lord of our life. And that's not always pleasant. We get something from a Savior. Jesus is going to save us. Yet, we also need to give something to the Lord. We give the Lord our obedience, our service, our loyalty, for that matter, our very lives. The excellent thing about Jesus is that he is a Lord who is also a Savior. Therefore, we know, we know that if we are faithful to him as Lord, he will also be faithful to us. And he will lead us to the fulfillment that we so long for, to be with God forever in heaven. Yet it's not always easy to follow and obey on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes it's easier, we find, to go with the flow. To go with the flow of what everybody else is doing. But I always remember what my mom and dad used to say to me. Well, Mark, if 15 people are jumping off the bridge, are you going to jump too? Amen? Yeah. Oh, you had same parents. There we go. Sometimes being a faithful Catholic and disciple of Jesus is an uncomfortable thing. It sets us apart. And what we do is we tweak and push in to other people's consciences. We remind them. And yet our task as followers of Jesus Christ is to be faithful to Jesus and faithful to the church the body of Christ. In today's second reading from St. John, he makes this clear when he says that for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. That is vital to our relationship with Jesus. Now, how do we take what we know Jesus is our Savior, and Jesus is our Lord. How do we take that and bring it all together? Well, we need to be mirrors of God's mercy. We need to be a mirror of God's mercy. Think of this divine image as a mirror. And we need to reflect what is in that mirror. It is usually more challenging for us to allow Jesus to be our Lord than it is to be our Savior. As we live in a world we don't like having, having things, having power and authority over us. Yet for many people around us who do not know Jesus in a personal way, the contrary is often the case because they see Jesus as a demanding Lord, yet don't realize that he is also a merciful Savior. Yet, they will experience the Savior's mercy and goodness. They will never find, but until they, re they experience the Lord's mercy and goodness, they will never find the courage to follow Jesus, to allow him to be their Lord, and to find the happiness and meaning that they are looking for. This is why Jesus gave us that commandment, to love our neighbor as Jesus has loved us. 
to bring his mercy to those that we meet. So he wants us to be mirrors of his goodness and his mercy so that people will discover that and will experience it through us, those mirrors. The first Christian community in the book of Acts, our first reading, understood this. The community of believers, it says, was of one heart and one mind. They were unified. There was no needy person among them. I've even gone to churches where I've watched, and these aren't Catholic churches, where I've watched somebody come forward and say, I need, I need a vehicle so that I can get to work. I don't have a car. And somebody in that church, by the end of that service, has given that person a car. I've seen situations where there's a family. They have nowhere to live. They need somewhere to live. Again, somebody comes forward and provides them with a house. That's what we are called to do to look after one another, to be one in mind and heart so that there is no one needy among us. This is the distinctive sign of a follower of Jesus, and that is the self-forgetful love that unites all of us. That needs to be our distinctive sign as well. So every single day, in our families, in our schools, at work, we have the opportunity to be mirrors of God's mercy. When we sit down next to a person who's having lunch alone because no one likes them, when we comfort a relative or a friend or a neighbor, who is suffering, when we try to listen compassionately and carefully instead of impatiently tuning that person out. These are the simple ways that we reflect like a mirror the mercy of God, to give God's light a chance to shine and be illuminated through our hearts and from our hearts. As Jesus is our Lord and Savior, he comes to renew his commitment to us every time we come together on that altar, at that sacred table. He renews his commitment to us in the Eucharist. So let us ask Jesus. Let us ask him to polish up the mirror of our soul so that we can shine forth the mercy of God and touch the lives of others and help people come to know him, come to love him, and come to serve him, not just as Savior, but also as Lord. So my friends, let's promise to do our part this week to spread the saving light of God's mercy. Amen?